Hi, I'm Dr Catherine Hughes from Crime Psych. Today's psychological analysis is of Stephen Port. I've just finished watching Four Lives on Netflix and I'm sure many of you have seen that as well. It's based on this case and the police's failings within it. TV programmes such as this give you some a really good insight into the ripple effect that these offenders leave behind them. The pain and suffering doesn't end when the victim dies. It's felt by the family for years following. Stephen Port is a serial rapist and a serial killer. He killed four men and he carried out multiple rapes. Port received a life sentence with a whole life order on the 25th of November 2016 and that means that he'll never be released from prison. Stephen Port was born on the 22nd of February 1975 in East London. Reports of him growing up suggest that he was a fairly quiet boy and preferred to be alone. He was described as being a loner and was often bullied at school during his childhood. Once he was an adult, his neighbour described him as having a peculiar childlike personality, exhibiting odd behaviour as a grown man, such as playing with children's toys. A former romantic partner of Port's also described his personality as childish and gave that as the reason for ending his relationship with him. After leaving high school at age 16, he went to art college, but it became too expensive for his parents and he spent two years training as a chef instead. He lived with his parents until his early 30s and then he lived alone in a flat in Barking in London. Then he lived alone in a flat in Barking in London and he worked as a chef at a bus depot. He had a, a tall athletic physique at six foot five and he worked out at, at the gym. After coming out as gay when he was 26, he had a series of boyfriends, all boyish and in their 20s and slim, described in the gay community as twinks. Port described himself as 70% more gay than straight, with a preference for young, smaller, boyish type men. From his mid-twenties, he worked as a male escort. Port would earn a lot of money working as a male escort using the alias Skyhunk. However, as he aged into his 40s and his looks started to fade and his hair started to recede, by the age of 41, to maintain his confidence and his sexual prowess, Port started wearing a floppy blonde wig which was glued to his crown. If you do want to learn more about offender profiling from me, there is a range of online courses and ebooks available on my website. I will leave the link in the show notes and also I would be incredibly grateful if you could give me any support on Patreon. There are four or five levels of membership and you get exclusive content starting from just one pound. So all of the links for that are in the description. Before I go on to talk about Stephen Port's offences, what I was able to learn so far was that there isn't really anything I could find in the media about any traumatic events in his life, any of his family life or any behavioural problems from an early age. He just seemed like a bit of a shy, a bit quiet and was bullied a little bit at school. He was quite insular and possibly a little bit mature. Between the ages of 20 and 46, he came out as being gay and he found that he could make a bit of money as working as an escort. He probably liked this attention and it allowed him to come out of his shell a little bit more. In his 20s, he was attracted to other men around the same age as him. However, his attraction to young men stayed with him as he got older. And this meant that he ended up being attracted to men who were quite a bit younger than him. He lost his confidence when he started to lose his hair, started to recede, which is why he had a toupee which was professionally fitted. When it comes to sexual preferences, we're all different and we all like different things. Some people have kinks and fantasies about a whole range of things, whether it's dressing up in various outfits or having sex in group settings. As long as all the adults there consent, there's nothing wrong with it each to their own, right? But Stephen Port's sexual preferences were twinks. He was said to have a revolving door of boys going around to his flat, some of whom he boasted that he would wed only for them to disappear out of his life as quickly as they arrived. One of his very few friends, his neighbour, Ryan Edwards, remarked how Port had a voracious appetite for meeting very young men. 
use drugs including poppers, Viagra, methadone or meow meow, crystal meth and GHB. Port became a GHB user towards the end of 2013. Mr Edwards said that he had concerns about Port's drug use but he was assured that his interest in young males was legal and that the drugs were for his personal use only. He trawled the internet looking for pornography showing twinks being raped by groups of older men and would watch drug rape pornography. This evolved into occasionally filming himself having sexual intercourse with unconscious males. He had an appetite for rendering young gay men unconscious with drugs without their consent so that he could have sex with them in that state. In this phase of his life, Port transformed from a happy, fairly self-confident young man who enjoyed the fact that men were willing to pay to have sex with him into a man in his late 30s and early 40s with a receding hairline and a dwindling self-confidence. I suspect that he was attracted to young men or twinks as they were known because during the phase of his life when he felt happiest about himself he was sleeping with this type of man. I could make a guess as to why he was sexually excited by unconscious twinks however it is just that it's a guess. The only one who will ever probably know is Stephen Port himself. But here's one possibility. We know now that rape is about power, domination and control and not so much about sexual arousal. With Port, I think it could be a combination of both. He was sexually attracted to men in their late teens or in their early 20s and being attractive and slim, but he wanted to have some control. He may have enjoyed the fact that he held all the power over his victims, whom he was sexually aroused by then. He watched pornography that depicted unconscious young men being raped by groups of individuals. And this idea was sexually stimulating and it gave Paul some power and control that he wanted. In the programme that I watched on Netflix, it only shows the murders that Stephen Port carried out. However, he raped a number of men before going on to murder. Port faced charges of drugging eight other men raping five, subjecting one to sexual activity against his will and two managed to get away before he could attack them and all of these were between 2011 and 2015. Port met his various victims via online gay and bisexual social media networks and dating or hookup apps. Evidence at the inquest suggested that Port had more aliases used to spread rumours in the aftermath of each murder than he had genuine friends in real life. He created elaborate stories about himself in the various bluff accounts that he held, claiming that he graduated from Oxford University and served in the Royal Navy. Port used gamma hydroxybuic acid, which is GHB, and that's a date rape drug adding it to drinks given to his victims. The earliest of these victims was an intelligent and an articulate 19-year-old university student. Port contacted him on Grinder. The pair went to Port's flat where his drink was spiked with GHB, making him dizzy and disorientated. The second victim also met Port online and arranged to meet. At first he felt comfortable with him and he thought that he seemed like quite a nice guy at first. At Port's flat, he was given a non-alcoholic drink and he immediately fell unconscious. When he came around, he felt as if he had no control over his body. He was shouting and screaming and calling out for help. Port took him to the train station at Barkin. He was still in this confused state and when, when he got there, officers from the transport police saw him distressed, incoherent and unsteady on his feet and producing green vomit. Port actually told the police that the man had taken G, which is GHB. The next events in the timeline are the four murders that he committed. First, he drugged Anthony Walgate on the 19th of June 2014. Port left for work the next day, leaving Anthony's body in his flat. When Port returned home early hours the following morning, he dressed Anthony and left him propped up outside his block of fats with a small bottle of GHB in his pocket. He drugged and killed Gabriel Cavari next. 
Gabrielle had been living with Port rent-free. Port claimed that Gabrielle had left the country to return to Spain to his family. He claimed that he'd returned to a partner that he'd formerly been in a relationship with. Paul then corresponded with Gabrielle's former partner under an alias. Gabrielle's body must have remained in Port's flat for some days. His body was found sitting against a wall of a churchyard in the ruins of Barkin Abbey. Again, Port had planted a bottle of GHB in his pocket and had disposed of his mobile phone. Port then drugged and killed Daniel Whitworth, dumping his body in the same place as Gabrielle's. Again, there was GHB left in his pocket. Port wrote a suicide note and he left it with Daniel. In it, he claimed that Daniel and Gabrielle had had sex and Gabrielle had taken a fatal overdose and as a result, Daniel felt guilty and also took an overdose. Port then created fake accounts to try and cover up his tracks, allowing him to strike again and again until the police finally pieced together Port's involvement in it. There are more instances of drugging, rape and sexual assaults. Most of them follow this same pattern. In conclusion then, Port went from being a quiet boy who was picked on to a tall athletic man and after he came out he found that he could make extra money as working as an escort. Then Port transformed from a happy self-confident young man who enjoyed the fact that men were willing to pay to have sex with him into a man in his late 30s, early 40s with a receding hairline, dwindling self-confidence, dwindling looks. As I said earlier, I suspect that he was attracted to young men or twinks as they're known because during the phase of his life when he felt his happiest and felt at his most confident, these were the type of men he was having sex with. As I said, we know that rape is about power, domination and control and not so much about sexual arousal. However, it seems as though it may have been a bit of both with Stephen Port. He was sexually attracted to men in their late teens or their early 20s and is attractive and slim. But he wanted to have some control. He may have enjoyed the fact that he held all the power over his victims, who he was sexually aroused by, so there is an element of that power and control as well as sexual arousal. He watched pornography that depicted unconscious twinks being raped by other men. The idea was sexually stimulated to him. And at the same time, it gave him some power and control that he wanted. This led him to carry out multiple rapes, multiple sexual assaults and ultimately killing four men. I do hope that you found today's video interesting. More importantly, I do hope that you learned something new from it. Thanks so much for watching. Bye for now.